Okay, so today I'm going to show you the initial setup for your UV printer from jaysprinters.com. Uh, this also works for your refined color machines or if you're using an N10 boards, which is the newer Hanzo soft boards. Uh, if you're not sure which boards you're using, there's an easy way to check on our machines anyways. And um, I'll show you that real quick. This green cable right here is a network cable that runs up through to here and connects to your print head board. So that's the logistics cable. It's a network cable that's connecting your main board up to your print head board, which are underneath this case and this case, and that's how they're communicating together. Unlike, unlike in the past when you're connected with fiber optic cables, or if you were connected to ribbon with ribbon cables or flat ribbon cables, those are different types of boards that can be used with Hanzo Soft and Refine Colors also use those, but they're finding that they they like this board and we're switching over to this board uh, because the software is so much easier to use and the network cable has a less chance of breaking going back and forth in your uh, gantry chain. So without further ado, I'm going to assume that you have your hardware already hooked up and um, I'm going to show you how to hook the network connection, or I'm sorry, the, eth the ethernet or the network connection to from the computer to the uh, printer and you have your essentials going over your printer done. If you don't know how to go over the essentials to make sure your printer is done, check the video out or right up here. I'm going to, I'll have a link or and maybe at the end of the video of setting this, pulling this printer out and setting up the hardware on this printer. All right, go jump over to the screen now. So we have the network cable plugged into the computer and let's establish a network connection and let's get this thing up and let's see our first print. This is a brand new printer and the first time you set up you filled your inks you're going to want to actually go into the settings tab up here then down here and load ink first inking so we'll select first inking then we'll click load ink and that's going to run about 30 seconds it's going to pump and clean your heads and get your print heads ready to print uh, after you're done uh, done with this then you're ready to try a uh, nozzle check Printer hooked up and communicating with the uh, computer. So now we want to do our first nozzle check. And uh, to do this, I'll bring you in a little bit closer. We'll actually bring this bed out with the out button. We'll bring this bed out with the out button here. You can't see that I've already printed on this machine. And then we'll put down something to do a nozzle check on. And then we're going to focus to the print head. So there's a sensor right here that you may or may not know about that your your uh, your computer or your printer will sense the height. So what we want to do is raise this up by pressing holding the up button. And then once it hits the top, it'll reverse. You hear that? So that wasn't me. That was the, the printer stopping you from going up any further. So now I always go down just a hair and then I don't trust the autofocus because I've had too many print head strikes. So I'm actually going to bring the print head out. And then I'm going to take a look underneath the print head in relationship to what I just sat down here. Okay. And it should be about three to five millimeters away. All right. Let's run this in. And then now we're ready to do our first nozzle check on hooking this machine up, which is a button right here. It says nozzle. Press that. Now this is going to move back and forth really fast. All 
All right, so here's that good nozzle check I was talking about. You see a good yellow, a good magenta, a good cyan, and a good black. We also see no missing lines. Now, if you were missing 90%, I'm sorry, 10% of your lines, you have 90% filled, you could probably print. And maybe even 80%, you might be able to print. It depends on what your color flag looks like. But this is a good nozzle check. Now, something that you're not seeing here because this is white is because there's two white nozzle checks here. It's one reason I like to do this on clear. Is because once it's on clear, especially your um, film, if you're printing on film, you can sh glare the light and you can see it. But see, you glare the light and you can see the white. You come around and see black, cyan, magenta, whatever. But you're white, you need to make sure you got a white, good white nozzle check. And if you're printing on the bed or something, you may not see it. Do it on clear, on film, or on black or dark color to see the white. White's going to clog first if you have an issue. So make sure you're nozzle checking the black, or sorry, make sure you're nozzle checking the white every day. Because um, I'd hate to see you wind up with a, a clogged print head over failure to check that. Okay, okay so now we have the network connection set up. I'll go ahead and delete this out of here real quick. You can see here, uh, if you have the network connection set up appropriate right here, we we'll unplug this real quick. So I just unplugged the, uh, what the heck? Yeah, there it goes. So I just unplugged the network connection. So if you don't have the, the network hooked up right here, uh, how we showed you, it's going to flash red. And if your machines, I'll fill flash red too. I'm going to plug the Ethernet cable back into my computer here. Just a second. Okay, just now plugged it in. We'll wait just a second there. Now we have a communication to the board. So now we're communicating to the board. We're connected up here. Now with this being a new printer, we need to make sure that we're talking and communicating to the correct uh, machine. So when this comes, we'll come up here in the RIP tab. We'll go to printer settings. And then we'll install the printer. So we're running a uh, the UV printer. We're not, uh, this is for if you're running a rotary tool. It's the spinner. Uh, I think this one's film and so forth. These are these are different heads. If you're running the XP600s, you will just want the default XP600 underscore UV. You'll click this. And, I, and actually here, I'll ch I'm going to change it just so you guys can see. So when you cut here. When you come and you open this up, your default printer will be, I believe, the CF. So we'll open this up. And to run the flatbed printers, you'll be UV. To run a spinner, if you're running a, a rotary tool, uh, you'll want the SP. And I believe the FZ is the film uh, ZZ2F uh, printer. Okay, uh, so XP underscore uh, UV. This is for the uh, 6090 models. And the ZZ1C and the ZZ2C and the ZZ1S printers. You'll click that and we'll click set as default. And now this is now our printer. So we're now on here and we're able to communicate with the printer. You should be able to go to print. I uh, don't mind this this light here. So this this guy right here uh, is because your printer is, the software, I'm sorry, supports uh, heated ink. And our, our none of our machines maybe in the future will have heated ink but right now we don't have heated ink so it shows disconnected just because the software supports it this is your flash so to turn on and off your flash and that's this button here so that's if your flash is on so we'll go to print you click flash we'll open the flash we'll say yes machine moves over and now it's flashing See the on and flashing. Now what flashing doesn't mean anything to the lights. This has to do with the ink coming out of your print head. So this is actually going to squirt just a little bit of ink out of your print head and move it away from the caps. I see finally a lot of people actually turn on, on the flash. Normally we want it off. So it's going to come stock off. So we'll keep it off. Okay. That's these little doodads. Uh, here's your spot color. So if you have white ink, it'll be here. And I like to print on image base, image density. That's not spot color. 
but you can do spot and image base image dennis density so it'll run your spot image your spot color image and underneath there and uh, underneath for white same thing goes for gloss if you have gloss the printer i'm connected to only has one print head does not have gloss the same setting applies there so i'll leave this off and this is your density when this comes see i was just printing on sunglasses when this comes that'll be set to zero and zero is where it prints normal white so hey you want to print more white so you want to actually emboss we'll move this all the way up to emboss but you want just a little bit of white we'll move it down here or if you just want a good looking photo we'll be right about zero you can actually click on this and click zero <clears throat> okay so half toning type keep this on smooth mode uh, there's no real reason to change smooth mode we'll just keep this on smooth mode there's plenty of other options over here to bleed so this is makes your white color slightly smaller than your cmyk color uh that's so the we the white doesn't peek out from underneath of your colors so all right so we'll go with that we'll you'll click ok if you want to save your settings or cancel if you don't all right so that is a real quick over here on the tool so a lot of the stuff i don't really use uh you can create a new file but if you want to draw and design in this but i'm finding that i do not like to draw and design in this file i only strictly use this for printing so we'll go to import and i have a color flag right here and you'll notice it's a tiff file we'll open the tiff file or import the tiff file and you just click ok and then this is the tiff file that we have designed uh, oh one thing i forgot to mention is your canvas so your canvas settings is this white square and it's representing your print bed that you're printing on and you you'll need to change this when you first get it so you go to menu and canvas settings and i'm printing on this size of bed it's a 32 and a half by uh 55 uh 55 i believe 55 millimeters so i just set it at 500 and 320 for the canvas so that this has no bearing this could actually be way bigger but if you want to see if your image is way larger than your actual canvas sorry like this when you first pull it in it's like that's as big as it can print just because you told it that's as big as it can print okay so i believe we are ready to go ahead and print our first color flag out of this machine since we got it all set up let's go ahead and do that now i'm going to pause my viewer here all right so now this is here we're going to actually click print and we have eight pass 12 pass or 16 passes think of this as draft normal and best printing so those are really print qualities. Uh, this prints really, really well on eight pass. So I'm just gonna click eight pass because it's the fastest. We have three options here. We can save our work as a RIP file or as a, uh, a file that we wanna work on later. We can print, if we click print, this will just send it to the printer right this second and print right now, or we can click RIP. RIP will actually save the file as a ripped file ready to print so you can print over and over and over again. So my opinion is get your item ready to print before you do this and click print if you're only printing it once. If this is something you're gonna use over and over and over again, like a color flag, let's click rip. And what it did was it just took us from rip here to print. So now I have this job here saved in my system that I could print over and over and over again, like a color flag by just clicking print and I won't have to rip it or printing it once, just print it right now, and then it deletes your file. I hope that makes sense, it's the best I got. So if we go from here, we'll just click print, and then it'll print. If we go here, we'll select our file, and once it's here, then we'll click print. Printing, right?
All right, so here's what we just printed. This is a call to color flag. This is something else you're going to want to print every morning after your nozzle check, once you think your nozzle check looks good or good enough. Normally printing a color flag, if your nozzle check is just good enough, not awesome, will help. And actually, after you print it, then you'll get a good nozzle check. So you can see it's a little dark up here. It's because my nozzle check was only good enough. It wasn't perfect. But now I probably have a good nozzle check. We'll check it here in a second. But anyways, so we got our color flag. Yellow, black, blue, red. We'll make sure our color's in the right order, the way you have it saved otherwise you might be printing the wrong colors and the printer is set up wrong but it shouldn't be uh and then also if we just get in the habit of printing this every single time you print you'll know hey my blue looks a little turquoise or green or my red is orange so we know that we're having a problem with our print head and the color mix and the the nozzle check will help teach us that too i hope this helped you out setting up your printer the first time if it did consider giving me a, a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you watching this far. If you did already, take a look at some of my other videos I have them here on the end. Again, I'm Jay. This is my to-do list. Thanks for stopping. Something I completely forgot to mention during this video was we printed on acrylic and I didn't use any pre-treatment conditioner. Lots and lots and lots of inks out there. You'll have to use a pre-treatment conditioner on acrylic. We didn't use one on this. You can see it's on here quite well. We could submerge this. I could put this outside. It's probably last five, ten years outside, no problem. Okay. So if you're using good inks, such as the ink that we supply at jaysprinters.com, if it has this logo, it's going to stick to acrylic without a pre-treatment conditioner. If you need a pre-treatment conditioner, you might want to consider switching inks. Thanks for stopping.